Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. China is planning new policies to rein in rising education costs, seen as deterring couples from having more children as Beijing confronts a worsening demographic outlook. Among the measures are new laws and the tighter regulations aimed at private education companies that offer tutoring services, which have been blamed for fueling competing and increasing education costs for urban families. New restrictions would, for example, curb private lessons during school holidays. Separately, Beijing policymakers are discussing measures to tamp down real estate frenzies that have sprung up in desirable school districts in China's wealthy cities, adding educational anxieties to a housing market that many officials fear is overheated. Taken together, the policies are intended to blunt two trends seen as driving up the perceived cost of education for many Chinese families, which is in turn regarded as an obstacle discouraging couples from having more children. Decades of birth restrictions have led many Chinese families to invest their hopes and much of their savings into improving their children's prospects. As incomes rise, that has fueled an arms race on private tutoring classes as more students compete for scarce placements at top schools. The hyper-competitive system, largely confined to China's wealthiest cities, have stoked concerns about the limited opportunities for advancement in the poorer countryside a priority for Beijing after declaring the elimination of extreme poverty last year. Education is an increasingly combustible social issue. Education in China remains under the firm control of the state, even after a year in which private education companies quickly expanded with big investments from China's large technology companies. Looming in the background are fresh concerns over China's demographic outlook, which has quickly jumped to the top of Beijing's political agenda. During a meeting of the Communist Party's powerful Politburo in May, Chinese leader Xi Jinping described the nation's falling birth rate as a potential threat to its national security. A once-in-a-decade census published in May showed China on the cusp of a historic turning point in its population as its working-age population shrinks and the number of older Chinese people balloons. Weeks later, Beijing said it would allow all married couples to have up to three children, and the policymakers are now weighing whether to scrap both restrictions altogether. In announcing its new birth regulations, Beijing said that it would also provide government support for education and child rearing without elaboration though. In recent weeks, however, Chinese officials and regulators have made it clear that it regards private sector education in particular after-school tutoring companies and real estate speculation around school district housing as impediments to its goals. The campaign against private education in particular has been picking up steam. In June, Mr. Xi called on officials to draw up regulations on the sector. One week later, the education ministry took the unusual move to, of setting up an office dedicated to regulating after-school tutoring. The ministry has also enacted new restrictions on homework loads for elementary and junior high schools, instituted a new licensing regime for teachers at private cram schools, and laid out the detailed guidelines for after-school activities. The tightening regulations have been a disaster for the country's multi-million dollar tutoring business. Shares in three leading tutoring enterprises. New Oriental, Gao Tu, and TAL have crashed this year, and a number of tutoring companies, both offline and online, have started mass layoffs. 
In July, officials are planning to roll out new curbs on online and offline private tutoring during school holidays for students aged between 6 and 18 in some large cities. If successful, the program will be expanded to other parts of the country. Meanwhile, China's powerful State Administration for Market Regulation, which is spearheading the current anti-monopoly drive against the country's technology sector, has slapped millions of dollars worth of fines on more than a dozen educational startups backed by Alibaba, Tencent, and others. While officials have cited allegations of fraud in imposing the fines, People familiar with the regulatory campaign say officials are more broadly concerned about tutoring services giving wealthier students an insurmountable advantage, and contributing to societal anger that has squelched the couple's desire for more children. Cram schools have proliferated across China as it grows wealthier and as fertility rates drop increasing school competition echoing trends in South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. More than 75% of Chinese students between 1st and 12th grade attended after-school tutoring classes in 2016, the most recent year for which figures are available, according to the Chinese Society of Education, a government-backed think tank. That figure is believed to have only risen further in the past five years. In Beijing, families are shelling out hundreds and even thousands of dollars each month for after-school tutors, fearing their children will fall behind. There is a wide gap in educational resources between China's cities, suburban and rural areas, as well as between those who are rich and poor. Shanghai, for example, offers some of the best schools in China with a pool of choices for students and a higher proportion going on to top-ranked universities. Its schools regularly top the global rankings, known as the Program for International Student Assessment, that track the performance of 15-year-olds in math, science, and reading. In places like Guizhou, however, a less prosperous province in southwestern China, where the majority of people reside in rural areas. Well-qualified teachers are rare, and the basic infrastructure is lacking. Many children even have to travel miles a day simply to get to school. Xie Wei Na, a 41-year-old Beijing mother, spends roughly $1,500 each month for her 10-year-old son to attend two essay writing classes, three online and one offline English classes, and one math class each week after school, as well as basketball and soccer on the weekends. Ms. Xie said her son's schedule can hardly compare with those of his classmates, whose parents are driven, she said, by a herd mentality of fear and anxiety. Though she thinks competition has gotten out of hand, Ms. Xie is wary of governmental efforts to ban private classes during school vacations, fearing that working parents like herself will instead wind up with unchaperoned children playing video games all day. Authorities have also taken aim at the runaway prices for home near well-regarded public schools where owning property can give parents a boost in lending a placement for their children. In recent years, state media news articles have described the families who paid the equivalent of millions of dollars for closet-sized apartments near top-ranked schools. Expectant parents have hired consultants to identify neighborhoods with possible new schools in hopes of securing a nearby apartment unit in time for their not-yet-born children to enroll in the not-yet-built school. In response, Beijing has in recent weeks shut down property agencies that promote homes based on proximity to in-demand schools, which they fear could exacerbate a home-buying panic. To sever the connection between home ownership and access to a well-regarded education, 
China's education ministry has also begun drafting a plan to expand a pilot program in Shanghai that allows teachers to rotate from one school to another according to people familiar with the matter. It is unclear whether the new policies will make much of a difference in encouraging more births. In China's biggest cities, new births have been far lower than in rural areas, as young urban couples postpone childbirth aim, amid rising economic pressures. In the capital Beijing, the number of new births peaked in 2017 and has declined steadily since then, dropping to a 10-year low last year. Without subsequently addressing the root causes of the increasing academic pressure among students and the declining willingness among China's younger generation to have children, some policy experts say the tutoring regulations will only be a band-aid on education provision and the demographic crisis. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly.